Hey crafty peeps, I'm Lisa, your dollar mom, and I have a special project for you today. I came across these super cute farmhouse clocks online, and I really, really wanted one. But they were over $100 on sale, and I knew I could make one myself. And what do you know, I made one for under $10. Dollars. That's right. I'm going to show you how to make these clocks for under $10. I used both of these as my inspiration and I am so excited with how this turned out. It has been on my wall for several days. It works and I'm so excited. The supplies you will need is a two of the poster boards from the Dollar Tree as well as an 18 inch wire wreath form. You'll need a pack of the four tin um, cans, I think they call them, a wooden dowel, two of the sticker sheets with the numbers on them, an X-Acto knife, you'll need some E6000, some extra strength tape, a glue gun, some paint, and lastly, a working part of a clock. So you can take apart an old clock you have, or I will link below a little clock kit for five bucks off Amazon. All right, so once you gather those supplies, you're gonna start with your foam boards. So they are 20 inches wide, so I wanna make a square. So I'm gonna make it 20 by 20. And this will work perfectly with our 18 inch wire wreath form. If you want to make a smaller one, uh, Dollar Tree does carry smaller wreath forms and so then you would only need one of these foam boards, I do believe. And the only reason I needed two is because I need a longer piece for the center. <clears throat> so now I'm going to uh, cut four strips at one and a half inches each and this is going to be the border of our clock. As you'll see me working on the ground here, I found this project because it was a little larger that I actually just sat down on the ground and worked on this project. It worked a little bit better for me um, than taking over my entire kitchen table that I think my family appreciated that. And so right here I'm just going to um, cut down the top and bottom pieces to fit in um, to my square here. And now I want to make an X in this clock sign. And so I measure across and it is 24 inches. And this is why I needed the second piece of board because I didn't have 24 inches in length left in my other board. And so here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of do, I guess you would call it kind of like an arrow in the corners so that it will fit in my corner. Does that make sense? So I'm making the tip of my um, cross sides pointed so it'll fit into the corner of the whole thing. I hope that makes sense. I think you can see here what I'm doing. Okay, now I'm going to take apart my wire wreath frame. You'll see me struggle a little bit, but I promise you it's really easy. The pieces are held together by the horizontal pieces and you literally just have to take your pliers and just bend them and the whole thing will come apart. So it just takes a little bit of time, but I promise you it's super easy. I'm kind of wussy with my hands and I didn't have a problem.
I'm going to unbend them all. The outer ring and the inner ring will be released. And they become the perfect size for our clock. Okay, so now it's time to just glue everything down that I have so far. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the border down. And then I will glue my X down. And when I'm gluing my X down, I want to cut it in a way so that they're not laying over the top of each other. Also, I don't know what I would do if my glue gun was not cordless on this project because I was nowhere near where the cord would be. So I use a Surebonder cordless glue gun that I will link in the description. I just love it. Who wants to be tangled up in a cord? I don't. Now I'm going to give this clock a coat of paint with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen and I will just cover the whole thing with this paint. Once everything's covered, I'm going to go ahead and start distressing it. I use steel gray uh, chalk paint from Waverly, and I just took a very dry brush. So this brush was actually one that had kind of had crusted paint on it because I wanted it to be super stiff. And I just barely dip it in the gray paint, kind of wipe it off a little bit, and then just brush it across this um, sign clock, whatever you want to call it. And as soon as this gray starts going down, I can't even believe how rustic wood it looks. I originally squirted some brown paint down, as you'll see, because I thought I was going to use some brown. But I just loved the way the gray looked, and I didn't think I needed the brown. So I'm just going to go ahead, and I'm just going to do this all over the entire thing, as you see here. And it just looks, it really looks like wood. Okay, so now it's time to work on our numbers. I got these um, stickers from Dollar Tree. I was one, one short, so I had to get two sheets. So you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna stick them down on just a little piece of thin cardboard, or you might call this chipboard. Um, this is just gonna give our numbers a little bit more substance because a sticker isn't quite um, hefty enough. Then I'm gonna take some white that same white with and paint, a little bit of black uh, Waverly chalk paint, and I'm just gonna mix these together to get a good gray. Once I'm happy with the gray, I'm gonna take one of the little um, dabber sponges from Dollar Tree, and I'm just gonna start dabbing that on all the numbers. And this is gonna give us our galvanized metal look. And so as I'm dabbing, just kind of being very sporadic and random. And then I'm going to go back in after I've got them down all in the gray. I'm going to go back in with that black, do a little bit more on top. And I'm just going to kind of keep dabbing until I get that metal look that I'm looking for. Once my numbers are dry, I will go ahead and just cut them out um, with my scissors. You can use an X-Acto knife if you're better with that. I'm better with scissors, so I just get it. And I didn't have any problem just following the sticker outline and cutting them. Okay, and then once that's done, the next step is going to be using these tin circle 
Hey, what do you call circle tins from the Dollar Tree? I just need two of them and I just need the lids and these are gonna be like our faux rollers to our like barn door barn door clock <laughs> if you so so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cover these with the black chalk paint and I'm gonna take my wood dowel and this was just in my scrap wood thankfully and it was literally the perfect length but you can get this at any hardware store and I just also cover this with the black chalk paint When all my numbers are cut out, I'm gonna take black ink and I'm just gonna dip a sponge in the ink and then I will just brush it on the out sides of my numbers. And this just gives that a little bit of depth and makes it look like a rustic metal number. Now I'm gonna tack down my wire frame here. I'm just gonna use a small bead of hot glue, more than anything, just to kind of keep it in place. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do, once all of that is kind of tacked down and in place, I'm gonna take some of the wire that I find in the automotive area of the Dollar Tree and use that wire to just really hold it in place. So right now I'm just checking to see where my numbers would lie because I want my wire to be under that so you don't see it. I'm gonna take my little piercer tool from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna pierce a hole on each side of the wire, the wire frame. And then I'm gonna take my little piece of wire and I'm gonna feed it in so that it, you can see it goes over my frame and I'll pull it tight and then I will twist it and that will just give my wire frame a little bit more sturdiness to um, more adhered to my board so that we don't have to worry about it falling off. Now I'm going to adhere all the numbers down. Now I originally used hot glue but here's the thing wire and hot glue is kind of iffy it doesn't always hold and so i highly recommend you use e6000 instead because i ended up going back later and re-gluing them with that so while hot glue is nice and quick e6000 works a little better okay so now i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna paint on my faux uh Oh, hinges. Hinges is the word. I'm going <laughs> to paint on the hinges. Really all I'm doing is painting on a rectangle. So don't worry. It's not that hard. Just painting on a black rectangle. Then I took some brads that I had in my stash and I painted those black as well. And I'm gonna use my piercer tool here and I'm gonna pierce two holes and I'll feed those brads through this. So with the tin lid, I'm going to also pierce a hole into the center and feed a brad through.
Okay, so now I'm going to use a fun tool that you've probably not seen. This is called a crop -a dial and it has two different um, hole punches that make two different size circles. And then this middle part here is for uh, putting together brads and eyelets. No, grommets and eyelets. It's actually a scrapbooking tool and I'm a scrapbooker at heart and so um, that is where this tool comes from. It works great it like the hole punch goes through like anything and it works really good on belts like when you need that extra hole on a belt <laughs> and so if it's something you're interested in I will also link that tool down below okay so once I got my little hole in my tin now I'm going to just kind of make a little hole in the top of my board here this is what's so great about working with foam board it's so easy to work with so I just grabbed this little piece of a skewer that I had also painted with the black chalk paint. And this is gonna be um, what adheres our um, a roller to the top, even though this is not a non-functioning roller. Let me just tell you that part, it's just for looks. So there you go, that's what that is gonna look like. <laughs> there was a little piece of hot glue in there um, and push this skewer back in there. And I'll flip my uh, board over and we will feed the tin through there. And I'm just going to put a bunch of hot glue in here to adhere it. Again, metal slash tin and hot glue don't always get along. They don't always stick. But this is kind of temporary because when I go to really adhere this down, I'm going to use some Gorilla Glue tape. And so that will be our final adhering. And that is what I'm going to do right here. So now I'm put it down on the ground, um, face side down, and I've put our the dowel across the top, and I'm going to use this Gorilla Glue um, black tape here to get the wooden dowel to stick to the circle tins. And so on the right here, I'm just making sure that my dowel is equal on both sides. And for some reason, of course, putting the little clock pack in, that footage disappeared. <laughs> but you're just going to use that piercer tool again to make a circle in the very middle of the clock and then just kind of work it till it's big enough for your clock piece. And it's the easiest thing. You'll know when you see it. You just push it right through. And then when you flip your clock over, You'll just push the little hands down, and that's it. the same tape just adhere that back part onto the clock and then here you will see a front part view of how the hands look once they're in place and this farmhouse clock is complete I think it turned out so good I think it looks good as a picture what do you think This may be one of my most favorite projects. I hope you enjoyed it too, and I hope it's something you feel like you can make because that's over $100 that you'll be saving by making this project yourself. All right, until next time, I hope you will like and subscribe because I have more videos to come.